this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do another layout that comes from the um, Creative Memories Home Office or Creative Memories Blog um, Virtual Crop Challenges. And if you're not already aware, CM is doing a, an annual um, event where you can, if you keep track of all of the blog posts, all of the layouts that you create um, in conjunction with their virtual crop that they do each month. And if you do all of them and then submit your tracker at the end of the year, um, then they're going to do a big drawing at the end of the year for everyone who has been able to complete all of the layouts. There's usually about four each month and some of them are single pages, some of them are double pages. I usually turn all my single pages into double pages because that's just how I roll, but you don't have to do that. And um, and then there in September, there is a worldwide virtual crop which has, I think, 10 or 12 different layouts. So, um, and, and you don't have to do all of January's now. You could do January's in October or, you know, whatever um, makes ha you happy or works out for what you are scrap scrapping. Um, so consider that. Think about that. And if you're interested, go to the Creative Memories blog. I'll try to put a link in the description of this video so that you can find that easily and be able to go and get your tracker and sign up. Uh, let's check out my workspace and we'll start looking at um, what I've got there for us. Okay, so I thought I would kind of take a step back um, before we get started today and just run through what led up to all of these pictures of Phantasmic. This was us waiting for Phantasmic at the end of our day two. And, um, and then my, my son kind of did a little bit of a walkabout, um, for my Aussie friends. Um, and he went kind of wandering around and just took some photos of some places that we had not gotten to. Um, some cool pictures like this one of the carousel in fan fantasy land and the golden horseshoe there in, uh, frontier land and the lit up castle and things like that. Um, and then he wandered over to Galaxy's Edge and took pictures of Galaxy's Edge at night with all the special lighting that they had over there. And, um, and then he came back and we watched Fantasmic, which was super fun. This is the layout we did just the other day with uh, the special peekaboo pocket in the middle. And... On the back of that is a page, a layout that I did a while ago um, that I just wanted to kind of remind you all of. This is from of when the dragon comes and Mickey fights the dragon. And um, I did this one right when the Enchanted Wizard paper pack came out. And so I think this is actually even the project recipe for that. Um, so that one was super fun to do. And then the following page is the one we just did just the other day with more of that wonderful newsprint type of paper and the um, kind of pixie stars, as my husband called them. So today we are going to kind of finish up our phantasmic experience and then be able to move on with... Um, our third day there, which was our last full day there. But um, right now this will just be the last little bit of Phantasmic. And in trying to catch up with um, the, last, the last little bit of this show, um, if you've seen the show, then you know that this is Mickey... Um, getting excited and celebrating and there's just lots of pyrotechnics going off and so that's what we've got in this layout is lots of pyrotechnics and so I'm going to use I decided that it would be fun to go ahead and try this sketch number two from the January virtual crop and instead of it being a one-page sketch like you can see here on this um, 
copied piece of paper. Um, we're going to make this a two page sketch and I'm going to invert um, one of the pages or at least the way that the photos are laid out is going to be inverted because I want the photos to the three photos to go across the top of my page instead of down the center. So let's see how it turns out. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be fun. So I have right here three papers from the Disney Enchanted Wizard. Um, the two pages of red stars that have the red and gold-ish stripe down the back. And then um, one more page of the lightning bolts with the Harry Potter stuff on the back. Since this is not Harry Potter, we're not going to use this page, but I wanted you to see it because it's super cute. And if you went to Universal or something, this would be perfect for that. Um, so I'm just going to set the, the uh, lightning bolts to the side for a minute and focus on these red sheets. Now, I'm also going to take advantage of the fact that I'm working on black pages for these layouts because when you work on black pages sometimes you can use the black that's already on the page to represent uh, what you what you might otherwise have to cut um, out of cardstock. So I'm going to build a center I'm going to have a black frame that goes all the way around the edge similar to this. See how this has a frame that goes all the way around the edge? We're going to do a black frame all the way around the edge and then um, my center layout is going to be using this red paper. So you can see the measurements are given that this center square is ten and a half by eight and a half. So it's not exactly square. But this bottom strip down here is ten and a half by two. So what that tells me is that this is a ten and a half inch square when you take into consideration the bottom two inches. And it would be super easy to do what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my trimmer. I'm going to take both of these sheets of red. I'm going to cut them down to ten and a half. So that means I need to take an inch and a half off each side. So I'm going to measure using my right side of my trimmer and I'm going to put the edge right here at one and a half inches which is leaving one block of my grid left. So I'm going to cut one and a half inches off this way. Set those aside. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to cut one and a half inches off this way. Okay, so this is going to make my ten and a half inch square. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two inches. So I have to measure from the left hand side. I'm going to take two inches off and I want to make sure my lines are going to be vertical for the short way, so I'm doing this right. So measuring and cutting two inches off. And we're going to use this and this, and we're going to take this piece and flip it. And this is going to be the bottom. Okay, so bear with me here. I'm gonna grab my adhesive and we're going to get this stuck on and then we're going to talk about some photos. Okay, so with the second page I'm going to go ahead and line up my second page right next to uh, my first page so that I can get a better idea of how to make this even because I want it to be as even as possible and even if your measurements even if your your placement is slightly off if both sides are even then it will be fine so just keep that in mind. OK. 
Okay, we're going to get this base put on. Notice I'm not only putting about a half inch of adhesive in about four or five places along that edge. You don't need to put it all the way down the edge. Your adhesive, if you're using Creative Memories adhesive, your adhesive will hold. And as I say all the time, please, if you're going to spend the time to create an album like this, don't use anything but Creative Memories adhesive. I trust it implicitly. I've had more than one book that was not made with Creative Memories adhesive fall apart and you just don't want to have that happen. Okay? Trust me, you don't want to have that happen. All right, I'm going to cut these six four by six photos down to five and a half and they will fit much nicer for my needs by doing that. So I'm just using the edge of my trimmer, that's five and a half, and cutting off whatever is extra. You'll notice that that's not quite a half an inch. You see, I don't know if you can see that on, on uh, my mat, but it is shy of a half an inch by at least a sixteenth which, you know, doesn't really make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things, but when you are a scrapbooker, sometimes it can be important. Okay, so these three photos that I have of, of the fireworks, I want to put across the top of my layout. Each of them are four inches wide this way, and I could do four, four, and four and put them right next to each other. However, you'll notice in the layout, there is a gap in between. Not only that, but these are three by three photos. So they fit very neatly in our 10 and a half inch inner square. Unf um, I actually don't want to make these, cut these down to three by three. I feel like if I cut them down to three by three, they would lose some of their impact. So finding a balance between three inches and four inches would mean possibly making it a three and a half by a three and a half inch square. Or you'll notice how this one right here is much smaller than the other two. We might be able to kind of do two large ones and a smaller one. So I think what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to start off with doing f a four inch, two four inch squares because it's much easier to um, continue cutting down if we need to than to try to put it back once we've cut it off, right? Okay, so that one's a four inch square now. We're going to make this one a four inch square as well. Let's see, I'm going to trim that there. So four by four. And then we're going to, let me just lay this on my page and get a better visual of what we've got. So if we're going to try to keep them within the confines of our 12 of our 10 and a half inch square that doesn't leave us very much room in between. That leaves us about an two and a quarter inches, two inches so that we have a little break in between. Let's see if we can do this one in a two inch layout. This one's going to overlap just a little bit. So what we may do, I'm going to cut this where I feel like it should be cut and then we'll see what that means where we have to move our other photos. Let's see if we can um, just play with the spacing just a little bit. So this is cut at two and three eighths right now, two and three eighths by four. Let's see what that means. So 
So it may mean that we have to come all the way out. If we come all the way out to the edge of our ten and a half inch square, will that slide up in between? It does, and it allows us just the briefest of breaks in between. So I, I think I like that. It's either that or I would push these out just a smidge, maybe about an eighth of an inch into our black border around the edge, which I actually almost like, almost like that better. And then these two photos are going to overlap each other and go down here on the bottom. Like that. But we need to come up with something that we can put across this seam at the bottom in order to be a little bit more in line with the layout sketch that we've been given. And then we also need to try and figure out which of these photos we might want to mat because you can see this 4x6 photo here has a mat around it. So let's see. I'm going to, I pulled out this lightning paper so that we could use it to mat because it matches the yellow in here pretty well and pulls the yellow out of some of the photos nicely. I don't want to flip this over because of the design on the back not really going with what I've got in my photos. So let's see, what could we use? Let me take a look at my stickers and see if there's anything in my stickers that we could use to add to create a border. So we do have these. Those would be fun, these um, swags. Actually, those would be really fun. Let's look at those. Let's look at the swags. And I'm going to put my trimmer up here. We'll use it again in just a second. But for right now, I'm going to stick that over there. And we're going to determine. So we probably need, I'm going to start with this one. If we use these swags to represent that border, going across. In our sketch you can see the border goes from edge to edge not just across our um, that break where the two inch portion of the paper is. So if we stick those there like so and we can come back in with another one and because we're only seeing a portion of that um, <clears throat> edge anyway because we're covering some of it with uh, photos I think will be good if we use this so I'm going to come in here with this sticker right on the seam and you can kind of you can kind of play with it just a little bit and pull it down if you need to, which I did right there. So I'm going to come over here and grab another one. But I really think we're not going to need all of this one because this is going to overlap. But we will need... Um, I'm going to trim it. So trimming it right after those first two. Like so. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and trim off this last one that's blue. And we'll put these two right on the outside edge right here and we'll add the blue one how 
much. Actually, we need more than just one space right there. So I'm going to save the blue one. We might use that somewhere else. So I'm just going to stick it right back on here. So this is going to come down like so. And then this one. So we need this first red one in keeping with our pattern. We need this red one. Right there. And then we need probably two more. Outer edge right here. Uh oh, that was a little bit beyond where we needed it. So let's go the other way so I can see better. There. All right. So now I can go ahead and adhere these photos on top of that edge. And actually, we need to we need to mat something. So let's come back in here and we'll figure that out. I'm gonna take this lightning bolt paper and I'm gonna cut it this way. And we're gonna go. Let's go. We're going to go four and a half inches so that our lightning bolts are upright. Well, I didn't do that right. I need my lightning bolt to be upright this way for that photo. All right. Since my visual capacity is slightly challenged today. Give me a second here. My adhesive is not playing nice. There we go. I'm going to do this a different way. This is not typically the way you see me do this, so I will, um, you'll get to see another option. I'm going to adhere my photo to my mat, and then I'm going to cut it. So I have done this before, but um, I think on camera I usually try to do this by cutting the mat first, but you can, um, you can measure the mat or you can just visually make a guess. And so I'm visually making a guess by cutting it this way. Okay, so we're going to do that one, and we will do, we'll do this one right here. And since I've already cut into this paper, let's just go ahead and we'll use this one, and I'll do it the same way. Ah, my adhesive keeps grabbing and doing funny things. Hello. Hello. Oh no. Haley came to say hello. <coughs> All right. So this one I'm just going to visually do too. But basically, um, because this one is cut shorter, going to have a different measurement. 
All right, so ultimately this mat ends up being just about six inches, a little shy of six inches by about four and a quarter. And that one will go there. Let's see if we need to mat anything else or if that will be sufficient. I think that actually might be sufficient. Although we could put a mat around this center guy right here just because he's in the middle. Or we could do the red. Maybe we'll do the red. We'll grab this strip over here. We'll mat the red so that he pops off the page just a little bit more since he blends in with our base paper. I think that will look nice. So that's a four and a half inch by four and a half inch mat. And that will go up here. Now, the, the issue with doing that is that my photos are going to not line up like I had intended. They're going to be slightly askew unless I just plan it that the mat is off, which actually might work because I, this one over here could be off as well. All right. Let me go ahead and get these photos set down and adhered to the page. Alright, so now we just need a few embellishments to um, go ahead and finish off this page. So I'm just going to grab some foam squares and these. I think we're going to go with Magic is in You because that's kind of the theme of Phantasmic, right? Mickey saves the day because he's magic all along. I'll do I can do a sword and a shield. Excuse me, my goodness sake. Which is super fun. And let's see, where are we going to want to put this? I think, I think I need a title of some kind down here. Maybe not these two. But maybe magical moments it doesn't really pop off of there very well though does it because it's blends in so much what if what if we added it to this paper and then cut a little bit around it to give it just a little bit of Nosh, and then we'll add the sword and this shield to it. I think that would be a fun way to add emphasis. So I'm just, I added my sticker to the same background paper that I used to mat the photos that are on the page and I'm just carefully
going around it to add just a little bit of an edge not a huge amount of an edge just a little bit of one we don't need a huge one we just need enough golds to separate it from the red that it's going to be on top of Now we need a phone square to pop it up. Come here. Actually, we may put two. One on either side. We can say magical moments. And add some foam to this guy too. And this one needs to be cut a little bit smaller. I know that's a small square but it is still too big for the end of the sword and I don't want the end of the sword to get stuck down onto the page so I just cut that square in half and we'll use one piece of it there and one piece of it over here on the hilt that down right there very carefully magical moments all right now I think I need something here and I don't know if I want to put something in here up here Maybe we should say all smiles and add some smiles or um, these, that's what we'll do. So the sticker sheet actually has some cute fireworks. So we're gonna add <clears throat> the fireworks in little bit of a cluster. Maybe we'll do red and green since we've got all smiles to add to it as well. And we'll use that red one in another spot. So let me get this green one off. Stick that behind there. Pop this up also. Magic is in you and add that little firework behind it and something else in front. Maybe a lightning bolt.
just like that. Okay. Just more foam squares on this, and we will be good to go. Come here. This one's going to go right here. All right. So not too bad. That one went together fairly simple and easy. Let me refresh your memory as to what the sketch looks like. This is the sketch we were working off of right here. And you can see how I turned it for this one somewhat. I turned the photos anyway, but the base of the page is the same. And over here on this side, um, the photos are actually quite different, but the base is still the same um, as it was over here. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope this was fun and inspiring for you. And until next time, I hope you have many more creative moments. Take care now. We'll see you in a couple days.